Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 7 of our Angular Automation with Protractor, TypeScript and Cucumber video series. And in this video we will be talking about executing Jasmine specs with SpecRunner. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 6 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Jasmine spec runner. Well, Jasmine spec runner is one of the many ways to execute the Jasmine code in a much faster synchronous manner. And you need to download a standalone Jasmine to get this spec runner, which is actually an HTML file. And this HTML file you can get from the standalone Jasmine from here. HTTPS colon double slash github.com slash Jasmine slash Jasmine slash releases folder. So here, if you navigate, you will get a standalone Jasmine package, and then there will be a specrunner.html file, and you can use that particular specrunner to run even your spec file that you have created in our previous videos. So instead of wasting so much of time in theory, let's quickly see this in action because we have been piling up our execution so far from past three videos. So for that, I'm gonna flip to our Visual Studio code. So this is the project so far we have been developing and we have written some code in here for the first te test spec.ts and we have this particular code but we have never seen this code working because we have not even executed this code even a single time using any runner. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to install or I'm going to get a runner from the specified location for the specrunner.html file. And which is available over here. HTTPS colon double slash github.com slash jasmine slash jasmine slash releases. And here you have this jasmine standalone file. So I'm going to quickly download this and let me open this particular file, how it looks like. And here we have a specrunner.html file. So what is this particular file? So instead of just looking at that, maybe I can just extract this particular file over here. And you can see there is an HTML file. So I can just open with Visual Studio Code over here. And you can see that it is a very, very simple HTML file. And it is pointing some of the files over here to the lib slash jasmine, jasmine fail icon png, and lib jasmine 2.5 jasmine.css. And there are some other files which is required for jasmine. And there is a player.js file and song.js file, some helper files, that's it. That's a very, very simple file. But what is this player.js file and song.js file and spec helper and player spec.js file? Basically, these are the files that are sitting inside the spec folder and also in the source folder. So these are something which we don't really require because we're not going to deal with this specification files or spec files or even the source files. We don't really require them. The only thing which we are very much interested in is the specrunner.html file. And this lib file is actually the one which is going to be something we have already installed in our Visual Studio code over here. If we just go here to the node slash module and all the way down to the Jasmine core and to the lips folder, we have this jasmine core once again. We have this jasmine.css file, this particular file. And then it is looking for the fav icon, which is sitting in the images folder, jasmine fav icon.png. So we can locate that as well. And then there is the jasmine.js file, jasmine.html.js file, and there is a boot.js file. Well, these files are again going to come from this particular folder location. It's actually sitting in, in here. So if I just navigate to this particular folder location and if I go to the lips folder, Jasmine core, you can see all these files which is required is actually sitting on here, right? So we have all these files. The only thing is we need to change this particular path location to point to our location because this specrunner.html file is bundled with the zip file that we have downloaded from here, right? So we're not going to use that. So let me quickly copy this particular specrunner.html file in our project. So instead of doing that, specrunner.html file, and within this test folder of ours, I'm going to create this file. Uh, 
and then I'm going to paste it over here. But instead of this particular location, as you can see, we don't really have this particular location. I'm just going to do this slash slash node underscore module slash jasmine core. Oops. And then we have, I forgot the path. So I'm going to reveal this in the explorer. And once again, within this jasmine core and lips jasmine core here i'm going to copy this particular location so this is the location which i'm interested in so i'm going to paste it over here for the css file basically and i'm going to change this slash a little bit to adapt to this particular change of the file path and within this core we actually have the images as well within this images folder we have this favicon.png so it is going to be within this images We have this PNG. So if I click this particular location, it should navigate to that particular file. If it is not navigating, then we have the real problem there. So I think it is not navigating because we don't have a slash in here. And now, yep, it is navigating, which means it is correct now. So, which is great. And similarly, we should have this JS file sitting in or the same location. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste all these files so maybe I can just replace over here and over here I'm gonna save it yep oops I cannot navigate oops we are we have one more jasmine core under the lips so lib slash jasmine core so i need to copy this as well hmm. all right so now is it navigating there yep so it's so this should be working right now as well so i'm going to save this and i'm going to get rid of these files because i'm really not interested in these files anymore because we don't have this particular file rather i'm actually interested in executing my code that i have written in my test folder which is nothing but the first test dot spec. So I'm just going to do this first test spec dot JS, right? I'm going to save this. And if I click this, it should open my first test dot first test dot spec dot JS file, which is great. So I'm going to save it right now and everything is looking cool. And now if I go to this spectral.html file and now you can see that I'm not even executing this spectral.html file anywhere I've just defined the spec location there and if I navigate to this particular folder location Revealing Explorer and if I just open this particular file you can see that it is eventually executing the test for me right this is really really awesome and you can see that I'm not even executing anything in here and the test is actually running behind the scene for me so now if I go to the Visual Studio code once again let me close the previous project we were running and over here if I just go to the first test spec and if I just do this let me also do this TSC hyphen W so that it can watch what's really happening behind the scene and I can show you what is going to happen. So instead of this 12, I think the first test case has got passed. There are two specs running. The first test is passed. That's why there is a dot in there. And the second test has failed. That's why there is a cross for the second one. So if I just comment this code out, and now if I try to refresh this page, you can see that there is only one specification and it has actually passed. And right, there is nothing else here. And if I uncomment this particular piece of code, 
And let's say this time I define this particular value to something else. And now if I refresh this, you can see that the two test we have written under this particular describe scenario is actually passed and there is no failure there, right? So you can just do a run all and it's gonna run within 0 0.001 second, which is very, very fast. And you can see there are two green dots there, which means both of them are got passed, right? So if you just hover your mouse there, it's also showing you the full test name for that particular scenario, right? So this is how you can actually execute the test much easier in Jasmine. So this spec HTML file is actually doing everything for you behind the scene because of these libraries that you have actually added so that it can every time watch what change is gonna be happening behind the scene and then it's gonna tell the result for you in this particular Jasmine runner much faster than you expect. So there is nothing called you need to open some runner and then you have to write the code in here and then you have to refresh that runner or something like that. No, everything is happening behind the scenes for you without your knowledge as well, right? So you can keep on adding the code as much as you can and then everything just run as it is. The final thing I would like to show is what if I don't write any expect condition there without any expectation and I'm going to remove the expect method, save it. And now if I try to refresh this, you can see it's going to say that the spec has no expectation. So this is inf this information is actually coming from Jasmine and it's saying that this particular it block don't have any expectation. So it is nothing to do with any kind of testing there. It's just kind of dummy there, right? So this is what I was saying in our previous videos that if there is no expect and match statement within an it block, it is just an empty it. So the it block itself will fully satisfy only if there is an expectation in it, right? So this is how you can actually execute the test using Jasmine, using the specrun.html file, and you can perform the operation. So this ends the crash course on Jasmine in our Angular automation with Protractor, Cucumber, and TypeScript. In our next video onwards, we will actually talk about Protractor. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.